Hello again, this is Noah and John, and we are talking Manhattan, and this is your special uh, coronavirus editions. Uh, John, we're back. Uh, it's another day. We're, we're one day closer to the fiscal stimulus. It looks like it's passed, and we're just waiting for it to get voted on. So that's, yeah. you know, things. Um, everyone's waiting to find out what's going on here, what kind of relief they're going to get. Um, I think it's going to be massive, 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 massive. Uh, and the question continues to be duration, duration of the of the peak containment, duration of the shutdown. Those are the two things. Expedite both those, whatever we can do, get everything back to business as usual. Right. But with that said, we got Leonard Steinberg here. I know. I, I, he, I don't even think he needs an introduction. I think if you don't know who Leonard Steinberg is, all you have to do is just look around and you'll, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Yeah, he's out there. And, and, and for those of you that don't, Leonard, um, first off, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Tell everyone who you are. Um, and then go right into what's going on. What are you seeing out there? Thank you, thank you. Well, I guess I'm as old as Mount Rushmore, so everyone has to know where that is. Um, look, I've been in the business now for over 22 years. Mm -hmm. I have seen multiple markets. I have currently several hundred million dollars worth of listings active, although I have really encouraged all my sellers to imagine these listings have been deactivated because quite frankly, that no one can do showings and I've never sold a high-end property in my lifetime without a showing happening. Now it may not be the buyer at the end of the day who looks at it, right. it could be a, a representative, but a, a high-end property in the multi-million dollar uh, stratosphere is not going to be selling right now unless it's an enormous, enormous bargain. Right. Um, so I do think, I don't know how this is all going to play out. I can look though to the past for some kind of precedence for guidance as to what we should look for um, in this, but it, these are unique um, circumstances and I think we shouldn't underestimate that. Um, but yeah. I'm actually very, very optimistic that once the fire is out and contained and uh, all the, the smoke has stopped smoking, we right. will yeah. head back to a path of normality at a speed that I think will shock everyone. Yeah, I, I agree totally. I agree on the guidance. Uh, we need guidance on legal. We need guidance from revenue. We need guidance on management companies. We need guidance on the banking side. Um, we need guidance for all those steps in our process just to let us do virtual business and at least tell our clients that, that we could do business and this is how we're going to do business should you want to partake in this market and, and, and the potential discounts that may be there. With that said, Leonard, I got a question for you. Um, you know, for people that are listening that are outside of, of this show, Talking Manhattan, or outside of New York City real estate industry, we've been in a fa five-year policy-driven downturn, slow bleed, slow progressive, that was probably bottoming out in mid-2019 um, or fall 2019 um, when we got hit with the regulations, the rent regulations and other stuff. That was like the, the low of it. We were coming back a little bit. We were starting a rebound. I know you knew that. I know you feel it. We've talked about this before and you've confirmed it. My question is luxury, like you do a lot of luxury exposure. Luxury was down more than the broader market. Like if the broader market was down 10, 15%, the luxury sector was down more like 20, 30, 30, maybe sometimes 35% from that peak in 2015. It, do you agree with that, number one? And number two is, are you seeing any deals in luxury right now? And how much down are those deals now based upon the fact that we were already down so much? Well, I think if you say the word down, you have to be very um, specific about that because real estate is a hyper-localized entity and mm -hmm. certain things are down 30 and 40%, oftentimes off asking prices that were ridiculously high. And some things weren't down that much. In fact, certain prices were kind of record territory. But for the most part, the luxury end of the market has been beaten up over the last four to five years. There's no question about it. It started, I'd say, about three and a half, four years ago. But there were some indicators beforehand. But I'd say the last three years or so, we've seen a, a notable downturn, specifically on asking prices that assumed things would just keep going up, 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 up. So who knows where this settles at this juncture. My feeling about the entire uh, perspective should be that we are in the midst of a fire. This is a fire that is burning and raging still and actually expanding. There are areas of the country now, I don't know if the cases are expanding as much as the ability to identify and confirm that there actually are these cases. I think our inadequacy in testing has probably been the biggest failure of the American health system in the history of mankind. Yeah. Because we are in the real estate business, you are in the data business, we all know one thing, 
without good data, we're all shooting in the dark. Yeah. We're shooting in the dark with no accurate data, number one. Number two, we cannot put a time horizon on this. And number three, I am finding it rather extraordinary that people are running around trying to do all of these things in the middle of a fire where the focus should be on putting out the fire first. Yeah. So I think we've gone to step three before doing step one and step two. Yeah, and the fear of that is, is that if you don't put out the fire and, and it's just going to drag out the duration of this whole thing and everyone, those people that want to get this done as quickly as possible and get back to business are, are shooting themselves in the foot, so to speak. Because now it's, going to be, now it's going to be a six month, nine month, ten, God knows what it could be, when it could have been a much longer three months or, or two, two and a half to three month thing uh, if we handled it right. Well, yeah. the thing is, we should never guess. We should learn from science and precedence. We have some clear indicators from China, from Hong Kong, from South Korea, how to handle this crisis. Yeah. That is how you need to handle this crisis. And then we also see, which is the most exciting part of it, when you handle it that way, there is a clear path to victory. Yeah. So my concern is, why are we ignoring that? <laughs> we shouldn't okay. ignore that. And yeah. worse than that, I think a lot of people could make some really foolish decisions right now in a panic. I remember after 9-11, and I equate this most to 9-11, because I don't think this is a fundamental economic meltdown as much as it is economic meltdown as a result of a incident mm -hmm. yeah. so the incident is still raging and i think the incident has to um let it run run its course a little bit more before we can start making these big picture conclusions of yeah. course there will be opportun opportunistic buyers stepping in right now who want a massive discount there'll probably be people in contract to say i must get a discount because i'm worth 30 or 40 percent less than i was you know three months ago mm -hmm. but there is a reality check in all of this that I think we, as people who care about data and fact, should really ground people towards, and that is to calmly let the fire burn, help everyone imaginable to put the fire out, and then slowly, once that has happened, be able to clear the clouds and the dust and the, the mess to see how we navigate going from here forward. I think there will be extraordinary um, opportunities in learning from this. Yeah. And so, I think we should be watching that more closely than trying to do these panicky deals. And I know some are important and I know people want to make a living, but I think this panicky aspect of it is, the, is lesson number one in real estate. Don't do deals in a panic circumstance. Yeah, that's... I, Location, 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 and don't panic. Right? Kind don't of, panic. Yeah. And don't make panicked choices and decisions because I remember people, 9-11, I remember the heads of brokerages coming down and say, tell all your sellers to slash their prices. Right. We're going down. And then three months later, we had this extraordinary rush of activity and prices went way up. Yeah. You tell me how $4 trillion injected into the economy with super low interest rates isn't going to at some point do wonders for the real estate markets. Now, it may not happen overnight, and we're in this instant gratification world that should not be applied to real estate right now. I agree, we will get this resolved much faster than in the past. But if we're just a few days into this year, I feel like I'm seeing a bit of insanity out there. Right. Donnie, I think you got something to say there, buddy. I did, I have a, I have a question. I want to follow up on you with some of those points, Leonard, and I completely agree. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, for a lot of agents who are new to the game, maybe they've been around just a few years, they're starting to get a track record of deals. Now everything's on pause. And basically their income streams are gonna be dried up for the foreseeable future. What, what kind of things can they do, uh, in your opinion, to sort of position themselves for the return of the market to stay productive, to keep their sellers, keep their buyers informed, and basically just sort of, you know, keep the wheels of their machine, the business machine running, um, in this vacuum that we have right now? Look, to those people who are new and who don't have savings, this is a nightmare. This is a total nightmare and I cannot in any way belittle their pain. None of us ever should. But I can also tell them that we've been through crises like this before and we've come through them. At this moment, I would tell them, this is survivor. This is the survival moment. You have to survive and if you speak to any great leader right now in development or real estate or in any other industry, this is survival mode. 
Yeah. Once you get to the other side of survival, you will slowly see a return to business as usual. It'll take a while. In fact, it could take some time, but mm -hmm. it is coming. So the gloom and doom that this is the end of the world. I mean, if this is the end of the world, then we might as well just hang up this discussion. But it's so far from the end of the world. Right, right. It's an incident that will come and go. And to those people who do not have savings, by the way, lesson number three, location. Don't panic. Number three, always have savings. Always have savings. But for some that may be too late and for some that may be wishful thinking who are living from paycheck to paycheck. So we shouldn't belittle, belittle their pain. But I would say this will end. Stay in touch with your clients, number one. Number two, you never ever have time at norm, during normal times to learn as much as you can learn right now. Read and learn and read and learn and stay in touch with your clients. Participate in all these um, you know, amazing forums that are happening which educate you so much more than you would ever be educated before mm -hmm. and you will come out of this much more educated totally in tune with your clients but avoid panic talk avoid pushing people and threatening all of that stuff has to be avoided think of yourself in this fire you're not going to push people out of the way into a fire hey Take leonard fellows uh your sellers um how many of them took their listings off the market I encourage them to not take any listings off the market because if I am Mrs. Farrington Brown in Sagaponic right now and I'm bored out of my mind, I might just be online looking at real estate. Right. And I don't think life has ended here. I think when all of this uh, comes to uh, some form of closure, life will go on. There's death, divorce, marriage, new fortunes will be created out of this. I know of people who are making fortunes right now. Some fortunes will be lost. The, the, the aspects of life that drive real estate will always go on. And if they have the opportunity right now to look at real estate, maybe they can put together a nice list of things they want to see when we can start showing real estate again. So I'm encouraging sellers to keep your properties visible. Mm -hmm. But right. fortunately, days on market have been frozen. And I think that's very meaningful to all sellers who fear that as a right. negative consequence of keeping something on the market. And your buyers, what about, what about the, the buyers that you got? You got buyers putting bids in right now? I actually do. I have um, one set of buyers who are actively negotiating on something they saw several weeks ago. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they're brave. And I do believe they will be handsomely rewarded if they can strike a deal in this environment. And if we can get a contract signed and agreed price, I guess that's step one. Right. Um, and these are not opportunistic buyers looking for a 25 or 30 percent discount right so that was my that was my question is i mean it sounds like they were sort of in the market previously and they kind of saw the market starting to tick up toward the sellers away from the buyers a little bit but yet they're not opportunistic and i'm, I'm just curious what their mindset is i mean are they obviously i don't want you to divulge any details but are they um, are they wall street people are they tech people like where where are they coming from that kind of gives them this idea that like you know what this is still a good time to buy i still i found something i like and i'm gonna keep making that play for it well i think they all have one thing in common and i have multiple buyers some who are looking for things that they didn't think they would buy three weeks ago mm -hmm. but um there are multiple buyers right now that all have one thing in common they're calm they're intelligent and they see opportunity not necessarily in some mammoth discount because of some panicked seller who's in trouble and i do think there's something rather vulgar about taking advantage of people or pushing that narrative. Um, yeah. But what they do see is there's an opportunity to buy at super low interest rates, to have maybe more realistic seller expectations, mm -hmm. and to move on with life. If there was one lesson I think we're learning universally is that life is intensely fragile and that home is your hug and that waiting for the perfect time, for the perfect moment to have your home, where right now I would say the best part of this whole um, horrible incident has been having a wonderful home to live in. And yeah. I think all of them have that in common. They say, life goes on. I have to plan for my next life. I have time right now to be yeah. thinking about this. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's most likely a lot of couples that are uh, sheltering down in a one bedroom that are probably looking on on uh, Compass or Street Easy saying, boy, that second bedroom will be really fantastic right about now. They're definitely looking on Compass. I know that for fact. Good. Uh, yes. But hey, like, they are planning for the future because you know what? Time is the last luxury. 
And we're learning that the hard way in this uh, episode. And I think it'll be the greatest lesson of all. Interesting. Yeah. We come out of it. Yeah, this is this is something to watch this whole this whole event. Um, hey, Leonard, I, I I'm wondering. You know, I I think that buyers are going to encounter these 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 opportunistic buyers. I totally agree. Um, I think they're going to encounter a very thinly traded market right now. I think we're going to go into a period over the next four to six weeks. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, but when the, when the panic is still kind of ripe and everything, right, I think once we get over that hump, I think that'll go down substantially. Um, but I think buyers are going to realize, oh, okay, I'll just see what's out there and I'll just bid 20% lower, 25% lower. I think they're just naturally going to think I'm getting a sharp dislocation. I'm just questioning, and they might in some cases, I'm questioning how many sellers out there are really going to entertain um, offers like that because they have to sell for whatever reason, liquidation, margin call, they just other reason to sell. Um, but I have a feeling that we're going to encounter a lot of frustrated buyers that are, are, are feeling like, hey, I'm putting my bid in, I'm doing it, but this, this guy doesn't get it. And I think what buyers need to understand is, is this is mo we're going to get through this. And a lot of sellers are not ready to get rid of that asset at a 30% discount or 25% discount from where it was three weeks ago. Well, I think you're going to have three sets of sellers and three sets of buyers. The first set of sellers are going to be the ones who are saying, I, I have to sell. I have no option. I have to generate capital and I have no other resources to generate capital. Although refinancing right now is a, a very good option. Then they're going to be the sellers who are just going to say, let's wait and see what happens here. And then they're going to be the third set of sellers who are going to say, you know what? I'm not going to get the price I got a few weeks ago, but I'm going to negotiate because I'd rather have a deal done and move on with my life. And I may, may make up for this on the other side when I buy or whatever, I, whatever else I do with my money. Someone yeah. might say, I'm going to take a $1 million cut on my sale and invest the losses um, into the stock market right now, which is intensely undervalued. So there's opportunity. Then you're going to have three buyers. You always have the vultures come out. They mm -hmm. always come out. Then number two, you're going to have a buyer who says, look, I'm going to buy, but I've lost a lot of money. I need a break. Please give me a break. And they'll negotiate with sellers who are willing to do that. And the third group of buyers are going to be, I'm so scared. I have to wait and see. Wait and yeah. see is a very safe place, except wait and see has left a lot of people right now in homes that are terrible where they had the wealth to buy them and now probably don't. So I right. do think um, you're going to have three sets on both buyer and seller side. Right. How long do you think this lasts for lighter? I mean, let's, you know, let's throw out some numbers. I mean, how long, how long do you think that, that this shutdown, this no longer, let's the no longer showing request. You know, it all depends. I remember being a naughty, spoiled, selfish child and I was sent to my room. And only when I learned how to behave was I let out of my room. <laughs> so I think a lot of this depends on a multitude of factors. Number one, fiscal stimulus. We have it. Number two, low interest rates. We have it. But the third, and to me, the most important ingredient is, do we have the discipline and the uh, desire to really uh, commit to stopping this virus from spreading by self-containing and really isolating ourselves in a disciplined fashion for a few more weeks. I don't know if it's two more weeks or three or four more weeks, but instead of guessing, let's look to China and Hong Kong and South Korea for some very clear evidence. Let's look to Japan, where you don't have a dictatorship, where you have a democracy and people were intensely disciplined and there was a beginning, a middle, and an end to this virus. Yeah. That can happen in the United States of America. And I'm very hopeful it does, because I think at this point, I see uh, some great levels of unity that hopefully last for a, a much longer period than the virus. This is good stuff. And listen, we're getting towards the end here, but um, I, I would like to get some advice uh, from you as we get closer to the end here. And I don't know if John has any more questions yet, but um, th there are other agents out there. There are other teams out there, and um, they're, they're adapting to this new virtual reality, um, this remote workplace um, that no one's really seen before in our industry. This is, there's, no, there's no playbook <laughs> for this. Um, and while we wait for guidelines, we wait for the whole thing on how we can do virtual business, what are you doing with your team? What are you telling your team? And what, what, is, what is your firm telling you um, about what, what the business is going to look like for the next four to eight weeks? 
Well, I think we're all um, very prepared. Fortunately, at Compass, we've put into, get into place spectacular technology to really be able to work from wherever we are in the world. So for that, I'm extremely grateful to the gods of technology because without them, I mean, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now, let's face it. Yeah, right. So we have the capacity to do an extraordinary volume of work remotely, but there's also a reality check. When you're selling high-end real estate, you can do very little to nothing unless you're showing property. So I'm telling everyone, learn lots, take care of yourself. I think mindset right now is gonna be so important that when, you, when this ends, you're fit and strong and mentally agile because who knows if you're gonna be working 18 hour days to make up for the wait and see yeah. pent up demand that existed. We don't yeah. know that yet. But I also tell everyone, stop guessing, turn the news off, don't listen to it for like 20 hours a day because it can drive you nuts. Yeah. Yeah. And most importantly, really look after yourself and those around you and learn, 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 clean up files. There's so much, it's spring, spring cleaning. There's just so much you can do. The company communicates with us like the entire day. So if you want to go for any classes or anything like that, it's extraordinary the volume of opportunity to learn and communicate and discuss online. Yeah. There are multiple meetings, multiple you know, chat rooms. Um, we have a workplace channel that has been very, very Im impactful. I actually send a video out to the company every morning and I try and put some lightness in there as well as broadcast properties. There's no reason why we cannot be researching and being aware of the inventory as much as I know our buyers are doing right now. Right. And I totally agree. And listen, there's a great time to, to set yourself up as a, as, a, as, a, as a credible person to talk to. Um, talk to the state of the New York markets right now. You should be growing your social, your social um, um, net out there right now. And also be very careful with what you say, because I think people will have a memory to what was said. Anyone who's coming out right now and saying like, this is a great time to buy huge bargains, blah, blah, blah. You know, we've seen that shtick before. Mm -hmm. And I think this would be a very inelegant moment to be broadcasting tacky, trashy messages like that. Right. That's, that's, that's a good advice. And listen, I use this company, Loom. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it with everyone. Loom.com. Everyone knows of Zoom and Zoom meeting. We're using Zoom right now, Leonard. But Loom is a little plug-in to your browser that lets you just do a screen share. And it, it does a video and a screen share. So whatever website you're on, whether it's your, your, your system at home, your, your, your vendor, um, Urban Digs, whatever, do a screen share with some of your clients and, and use this technology to get used to how this all works. And then you just email that client a link to the video and they get to see a one-on-one -on -one engaging talk between your professional and the client. And I think that will help you down the road when this market, I'm going to be the guy that's going to tell you what's happening in this downturn. And I'm going to be the guy that's going to show you when we're starting to get out of it. Exactly. And I'm going to do it. Yep. Awesome stuff. Leonard, thank you so much for taking the time. Fantastic. Thanks. John, great stuff. Thank you. This is Noah and John from Urban Digs. We hope everyone stays safe and we'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.